after Jesus was crucified on the cross, he was raised from the dead. And after Jesus was raised from the dead, he spent about 40 days on the earth. And what did he do? Well, he did leadership development. He talked to people, he talked to his disciples and others. There were over 500 people that were eyewitnesses of Jesus being resurrected from the dead because they saw him after his resurrection. And he talked about the kingdom of God. He talked about the kingdom of heaven. He talked about life. He talked about life eternal. And then after the 40 days, Jesus ascended into heaven. Now we begin this story in the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, and we know that he talked about the kingdom of God. And the disciples asked him, well, what's going to happen now? Are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And in Acts 1, 7, Jesus said, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has fixed on his own authority. And then in verse 8, Acts 1, verse 8, Jesus said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see the concentric circles there. And when he had said this, the disciples were looking on and Jesus was lifted up on a cloud. A cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as Jesus went up, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said to them, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. That's out of the book of Acts chapter 1. We looked at verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. Four points for you today out of Acts chapter 1. Number one, be watching and waiting for Jesus' second coming. We know that at some point in the future, Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to judge the world. He's going to uh, usher in his kingdom. Uh, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more disease, and no more death. Uh, people ask, well, David, when will that be? We don't know. No man knows the hour or the day. Jesus Christ may come back uh, in 2323, and maybe 300 years from now. We have no idea. But what we do know is that Jesus Christ is coming back, and he's instructed us to watch. He's instructed us to wait. And so the disciples see Jesus ascend up into heaven. And the two men, probably angels, tell them that Jesus Christ is coming back. This is a major theme in New Testament theology. Jesus Christ is coming back. And so here's my question. If Jesus Christ came back today, would you be saved? Are you sure of your salvation? And people ask, well, how can I be sure? Repent of your sin and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be watching and waiting for Jesus Christ's second coming. Number two is be witnesses for Jesus Christ. We need to tell others what Christ has done for us. Be a witness for Jesus Christ. He tells them that before he ascends into heaven, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the world. So we tell other people about Christ. Tell other people what Christ has done for you. Tell other people how you came to be saved. Tell other people how you're growing in Christ. You know, we're kind of drifting away from that now. But Jesus Christ has called us to be witnesses, to tell other people the good news about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we live in a, a world of bad news. Turn on the news today. We live in a world uh, that is really struggling and spiraling out of control. And Jesus Christ says, you need to be a witness. Be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Tell other people what Christ has done for you. Give thanks to the Lord and share the good news of the gospel with other people. This is Church Growth 101. One person telling one person about what God has done for them, winning souls to Christ, 
helping people to find peace with God. You know, as a hospice chaplain and as a minister, I often ask people, do you have peace with God? It's a great question, and it helps them to open up. It's, it's not a threatening question. It's kind of a softball question, kind of an easy question for them to begin to digest and think about their relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you have peace with God? Are you sure of your salvation? Repent of your sins. Believe in Jesus Christ. Number one, be watching and waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Number two, be a witness for Jesus Christ. Tell other people what the Lord has done for you. Jesus Christ has instructed us to make disciples. He said, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. That's out of Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. So Jesus Christ has given us the Great Commission, make disciples. That's the main verb in that section, make disciples. Three participles, going, baptizing, teaching. But the main thing is to make disciples. And again, church growth 101. And our churches need to grow because so many people out here are lost. They need the Lord. They need a church family. They need somebody to listen, somebody to care, somebody to, to love them. And so that's what we try to do. You know, all this in Acts chapter 1 and in the next session, Acts chapter 2, it all reminds me of the Apostles' Creed. You remember the, the Apostles' Creed? You used to say it in church. We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was crucified, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, and the Apostles' Creed. We used to say that a lot in church. I think we need to come back to that. We've drifted away from the creeds and, and away from the basic tenets of the Christian faith. This world's in trouble, and we need to come back to the Lord. Be watching and waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Be a witness for Christ. Tell other people the good news of the gospel, what Christ has done for you. Number three is be of one accord in prayer. Be of one accord in prayer. If you study Acts chapter 1, you study Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, unity, oneness is a major theme in the early church. Whatever happened to that? We need to get back to that. We need to be of one accord. Well, what happens? We've got the disciples, and they're together. Simon Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, all these, with one accord, devoted themselves to prayer, together with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. There were women and men in ministry together in the early church, Acts chapter 1. They played a major role. God has created you for a purpose, and everybody has an important role to play in the kingdom of God, in the life of the church. And so they were of one accord. You don't see of one accord very often anymore in our culture. Look what happened in the House of Representatives. The, all the fighting and uh, the squawking, and they could not even elect a Speaker of the House. I mean, it's been a hundred years since something like that happened. Why is that? Because we've lost the unity. Uh, how do we find unity? Well, Jesus said, listen. He said, I want you to hear. Jesus said, I want you to listen up. The Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's where the unity comes from. 
loving others, putting others first, respecting others. And what I just quoted was out of Mark 12, 28 through 31, the Great Commission, the Great Commandment. They all go together. Jesus Christ wants us to be of one accord. The early church was of one accord in prayer. They loved God. They loved each other. They loved spending time together. They were all of one accord. Again, Acts 1, 14. All of these were of one accord, devoted themselves to prayer along with the women, together with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In the early church, women were very involved in ministry. Now, if you're a woman and you're thinking maybe God has called you into ministry, you need to read the Gospel of Luke and you need to read the book of Acts because Luke and Acts, both written by Dr. Luke, goes to great lengths to show you great women of God who were in ministry, vital ministry, great ministry. And so in the early church, my third point, they were all of one accord. There was unity. There was oneness. Acts chapter 1, you see it again in Acts 2, 3, 4, and beyond. In the early church, they were all of one accord in prayer. They were praying together. I want you to think about something. You begin all this with God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. You begin with the ministry of Jesus Christ in Galilee, and you see Jesus teaching and his, his teaching about the kingdom of God, his passion, his death on the cross, his blood shed for our sins, his death, his resurrection, the 40 days, and then the ascension into heaven. And from that, the Lord used about 120 people. They tell us there were about 120 people together in Acts 1.15. From that, God Almighty began the Christian movement that has grown to over one billion, with a B, all over the earth. My dear friend, if that wasn't for real, it would never have spread all over the world, and it's still strong today. And in fact, the, the church will be strong and vibrant until Christ comes back. There are going to be some rough times, going to be some good times, but the church will be strong until Jesus Christ comes back. Why is that? We were all of one accord. In prayer, we were together. We were with each other, and we like to be with each other. You'll see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. They were all together. You'll see in Acts 2.44, they were all together. You'll see it in Acts 2.46, they were all together. You'll see it in Acts 4.32, they were all of one heart and one soul. That's the key, the unity. When you love God with all your heart and all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, you love your neighbor as yourself, you begin to sow the seeds of unity. They were all of one accord. Four points for you today out of the book of Acts. We're glad you're watching the video. We thank you for watching. We're in Acts chapter 1. Number one, be watching and waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And at some point in the future, Christ is coming back. Somebody say, well, David, Christians have been saying that for 2,000 years. Yep, and we're going to keep on saying it until he comes back. And I promise you, he will. Think about that. And you, you look at the, the faith of the believers around you, the people that are giving their lives, investing their lives in, in teaching children in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, right around the corner, about five months away. They were all together of one accord, and they did the Lord's work, and that's what we've got to do too. We've got to be purpose-driven, as Rick Warren would say, and we'll get to that. Be watching and waiting. Be a witness for Jesus Christ. Tell other people what He has done for you. Be of one accord. And number four, uh, be humble and be obedient. In the early church, because these 120 people were humble and obedient, God Almighty grew a worldwide movement of Christianity that has changed lives for 2,000 years, changed lives for the good, because these people were humble and obedient. We're talking about uh, the 11 disciples, and then we're talking about the women 
They worked together with the men, the women, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and many, many others, men, women, and children came along to help as well. Now, the second half of the book of Acts tells us that they had to find one more disciple to take the place of Judas. And so how did they do that? Well, Simon Peter stood up and said, well, listen, we got to pray about it. And so they prayed and prayed and prayed and asked the Father to send them the right person to be the 12th man on this roster because somebody had to take Judas' place. And so they, they put forward two names, uh, Joseph uh, called Bar Barsabbas, and then another guy called Matthias. And they prayed, and listen to this prayer, this is beautiful. They said, quote, Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show us which one of these two thou hast chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own way. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias. What do you see here? The disciples, they were humble, they were obedient, they were reverent, they were all of one accord, they were focused on the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and God used them to grow an incredible church around the world where people were saved and nurtured and loved, and we've got to keep this going until Christ comes back. Live your life by the Word of God for the people of God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Well, thank you for watching the video, and may God bless you and your family.